On November 2nd, 2016, I woke to the same news many Americans did. Two police officers had been shot and killed in an ambush attack in Des Moines, Iowa. Later that day, I would find myself in the middle of the aftermath of this event. And the stories that I heard were nothing short of amazing. Many people did not want to be on camera, but their stories are worth sharing, and that is what this video is about. From the daughter of Scott Michael Green, to a cousin of Officer Justin Martin, to a neighbor who ran out the sound of gunfire only to find himself too afraid to approach a police cruiser full of bullets, to the key witness who saw the suspect standing at the side of a police car, thinking it was just a normal interaction between a civilian and a helpful officer, only to later come out and open the driver's door of that same cruiser to find an officer dying of gunshot wounds. I found lots of emotion, but no hatred. And although in the midst of their pain, they didn't want to be on film, their story is worth sharing. So here it is. My first stop was Des Moines headquarters. Dodging media cameras, I was able to take a few pictures of the memorial, a police cruiser covered in flowers and balloons from people showing their support for the police department and sympathy for the families and coworkers of Sergeant Anthony Buminio. After a short conversation with a teary-eyed Des Moines police detective, I felt it was time to move on to 70th and Aurora in Urbandale where Officer Justin Martin was killed. Not long after I arrived and I was taking in this memorial, a young woman walked up with flowers in her hand. You can see her right here. And little did I know, her friend began blocking my camera. And as she began a conversation with another gentleman, a neighbor from down the street, I overheard something. She said, Scott was my father. And the way she said it caught me off guard and kind of threw me for a loop because she said was. As if this Scott was dead. And I knew neither of the officers' name was Scott, and then it dawned on me. Scott Michael Green is the alleged shooter of these two officers. She was already distancing herself from her own father. And it took courage for her to say that at the memorial of an officer he had killed to someone she didn't know. And I turned to her and I asked, to be clear, Mr. Green was your father? And she said, yes. Before she finished that one simple word, I was hugging her. Because I could tell by the look on her face, the tears in her eyes, and the fact that she was already saying was that not only was she mourning for this officer, but she was also dealing with losing her own father and the hatred and judgment against her and her family for his actions. And I said, you don't have to say was. He's still alive and he's still your father. And I could see how grateful she was for those words because she knew that was true but didn't want to admit it. And she began to explain how her family isn't crazy, that they're normal people. And it seemed all she wanted in that moment was to be judged upon her own actions, not those of another. And how many Americans find themselves in that very position? It wouldn't be long before I witnessed firsthand someone doing just that, judging her for what her father did. In fact, it was one of the gentlemen standing there with me when she admitted she was Scott's daughter. She's the daughter from the guy who killed the people. Come on. I don't think he did it right. I don't think so. You, I don't think anything about my family, but I, don't, I think something if it was your family. So you heard the shots and, and you came all the way to right here? You know, to, to right the, here. To the... By Wells, far like right here. Yeah. But I say, oh, oh, this is not good. And they went back. Oh, I told my brother about probably he has a, like automatic stuff because you can hear like a sa, 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 sa. Yeah. Very continuous and very good, I mean. And I said, what? 
No way. As I was speaking with these two gentlemen, one of them pointed to another neighbor and said, he saw everything. You should talk to him. So I went and introduced myself, and his name was Russell Cheatham. By the time I spoke with Russell, he had already told investigators everything he had seen. But he had been hiding out from the media. He told me the first thing he wanted to do was go in his house and hide behind the door. But as we spoke, he realized he needed to share his story. He just didn't want it to be about him, and that's why there's no video and no photos of Russell. So we went into his living room, sat down on the couch, and talked. Here are a few highlights from that conversation. The full version is available on this channel as well as the podcast. I'm willing to tell my story, but I don't want this to be about me. I thought he was talking to the officer. And he casually walked away and got into his truck and drove off. The back end of the truck appeared to be a Ford to me. And what was distinctive to me was he had a mismatch topper. He had a topper on the back of the truck that didn't match. It appeared to be white with a little uh, ladder rack or something on it. Casually, uh, just nonchalantly walked to it, got in. No peeling of the tires, no zooming of the engine, just casually rolled down the street. I swung open the police door and, and saw the officer there slumped in his seat, and, and I knew immediately that there was nothing I could do for him. There was no life. Just before the state trooper gets out of his car, I hear additional gunshots in a distance. Pow, 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 pow. And the only reason he didn't have the opportunity to defend himself is because he sat there in his vehicle thinking that there's an Urbadale citizen that's in need and I'm going to sit here and wait to see what his problem is. I've stood in this doorway for 26 years and I've watched the police officers go in all different directions of this intersection doing their job. I, I understand the message of Black Lives Matter. I'm a black man. I, I want people to understand that a young man lost his life simply because he was doing his job. And anyone that thinks they have a right to promulgate violence towards the police, they're wrong. For the full interview with Russell, you can click the link on your screen right now. If you'd like to support Police Academy, find out more, or share your story, you can do so at policeacademypodcast.com or email me at policeacademypodcast at gmail.com. In honor of Officer Justin Martin of the Urbandale Police Department and Sergeant Anthony Bominio of the Des Moines Police Department, do good, be strong, Fear nothing. This is Police Academy.